Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about the herb Bacopa and its effects on both memory and stress. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome to Nutrition Library, your trusted resource for an evidence-based approach to supplementation. If you haven't already or you're new to the channel, do me a huge favor and hit that red subscribe button that's below this video and then hitting that thumbs up button for us as well. It helps me out big time in the YouTube algorithm and is a super simple way that you guys can support this channel. So thank you so much. All right, so again, in this video, we're gonna be taking a fairly deep dive into the effects of Bacopa on both stress and memory. And then at the end of this video, we're also gonna dive into some of the um, some of the more known side effects and also some of the lesser known side effects of Bacopa, as well as talk about some of the dosing options that you have. All right, so the most common use of Bacopa um, is for its effects on memory. And that's gonna be the first benefit that we talk about today. Now, there is actually a handful of really well-performed studies on Bacopa's effects on memory. And it's a fairly interesting herb in that its effects on memory are fairly unilateral, meaning that they are applicable to both elderly individuals and younger individuals. A lot of studies that have been performed on specific compounds to enhance memory, most of those have been performed in elderly individuals. However, Bacopa is unique in that it has both an effect in elderly populations as well as younger populations. Now, the primary mechanism of Bacopa is that it actually increases dendritic outgrowth on neurons. And so your dendrites are kind of the little portions of nerves that actually branch out to connect to other nerves in the central nervous system. And so because of Bacopa's ability to increase the numbers of these dendrites, there is both a theoretical and a clinical implication for its ability to improve memory function. Now, the two portions of the brain that Bacopa has an effect on are one, the hippocampus, and two, the amygdala. Now, the hippocampus is typically the portion of the brain that gets talked about the most when it comes to memory, and rightfully so, it has a a specific ability to consolidate short-term memory into long-term memory um, and also has a very specific effect on spatial memory. And so the best way that I can describe this is that when you close your eyes and think about getting into your car and driving through specific streets, uh, to get to a specific destination, your ability to map out the roads that you're going to take um, and the things that you're going to be seeing on the way to work. Uh, maybe you're stopping at McDonald's or Starbucks or whatever it might be before you get to your destination. Your ability to map out that route, mentally speaking, is largely due to the ability of the hippocampus to map out that spatial region. Now, Bacopa has also been shown to specifically increase dendritic outgrowth on neurons in the area of the amygdala, and more specifically, the basolateral amygdala. Now, the basolateral amygdala is the portion of the brain that's responsible, interestingly enough, for the consolidation of fear-related memories, and so, the implications of this aren't really well understood at the moment. However, because Bacopa has been shown to improve dendritic outgrowth in both the hippocampus and the amygdala, it is pretty clear that Bacopa has a fairly unilateral effect on improving memory for those reasons. Now, Bacopa is also a fairly interesting compound in that it's one of the only compounds that I'm aware of that has been specifically shown to enhance verbal fluency. 
And this is obviously relevant for literally anyone who is trying to improve their ability to uh, enhance verbal recall and improve your ability to piece together fairly complex sentences. Now, another mechanism that Bacopa is involved in um, when it comes to memory formation and has been hypothesized by several different researchers is that it also has the ability to, one, increase tryptophan hydroxylase, which is a enzyme that converts tryptophan into 5-HTP, and then subsequently 5-HTP into serotonin. And so by tryptophan hydroxylase's ability to uh, increase the levels of 5-HTP in the brain, it provides more substrate that is available for other enzymes to then convert that 5-HTP into serotonin. Now, another mechanism that Bacopa is involved with is that it also increases the serotonin transporter, uh, which helps to transport serotonin uh, between neurons and between synapses within the brain, within the central nervous system. And so by doing both of these things, Bacopa is considered a pro-serotonin compound, um, and it has been hypothesized by several researchers that um, its pro-serotonin effects also contribute to its memory enhancing effects. Now, what's also interesting is that not only does Bacopa uh, increase levels of serotonin in the brain and in the central nervous system, uh, but it also has the capacity to change the expression of specific serotonin receptors on neurons. And though this mechanism is fairly complicated, suffice it to say that there are over 10 serotonin receptors that have specific functions and are expressed differently on specific regions of the brain. And so by changing the expression of the, these specific receptors in specific regions of the brain, it's possible that this mechanism might also play into Bacopa's ability to enhance memory formation. And now the pro-serotonin effects of Bacopa also lend to its second health benefit, and that is its anti-stress effects. Now, Bacopa has in a handful of trials been shown to reduce the expression of several different markers of stress in the brain, and a couple of different researchers have hypothesized that Bacopa's ability to reduce the markers of stress actually stem from its ability to affect the genetic expression of stress markers. And so now this mechanism is fairly complicated as well. Um, however, suffice it to say that it looks like Bacopa is able to, interestingly enough, induce a state of stress when you're not in a state of stress, which then affects specific genetic markers that when you do experience stress, uh, you're more genetically predisposed to handle it in a better way. Now, again, it isn't super clear the exact mechanisms that are going on here, but it is pretty clear that Bacopa has a fairly reliable and a unilateral effect on both reducing the effects of chronic stress and acute stress. Now, Bacopa has also been shown in a handful of clinical trials to reduce the symptoms of depression and anxiety. And there are two primary mechanisms that might be at play here. One is uh, the pro-serotonin effects that we already talked about, as well as the anti-dopaminergic effects that um, are present in the striatum when uh, individuals consume Bacopa. Now, the striatum is a region of the brain that is highly involved with locomotion and is actually one of the primary um, regions of the brain that are affected by caffeine. And this is theoretically one of the reasons why caffeine can induce anxiety in some individuals. And so by blocking the overactivity of dopamine in this specific region of the brain, uh, there 
is an ability of Bacopa, according to uh, that individual study, to reduce the effects of anxiety. Now, this also leads me to our first side effect of Bacopa, and that is that in some individuals, and especially in individuals that are used to consuming caffeine on a regular basis, there can be an adjustment period where individuals that are consuming Bacopa um, are not used to the anti-dopaminergic effects of Bacopa in the striatum, and because of this, they may experience a slight lethargy and kind of a lethargic mood and uh, some even describe it as a depressed mood, and that is simply because Bacopa is preventing the spike of dopamine in the striatum that caffeine induces. Um, now, this is also a positive for some individuals that are uh, prone to get anxiety from caffeine. Uh, coffee and Bacopa can pair very, very well, especially for individuals that are caffeine naive. However, for those individuals that are already consuming caffeine on a regular basis, there may be an adjustment period uh, where you have to get used to uh, that lack of a dopamine spike in the striatum. Now, the second side effect that may be relevant but has not been proven in human clinical trials yet is that uh, Bacopa may have anti-fertility effects. And so uh, if you are an individual who is currently trying to conceive uh, specifically if you are a male, uh, Bacopa may not be the right herb for you simply because of the possible effects and the possible negative effects that it may have on fertility. Now, the last side effect isn't necessarily a side effect per se. However, I do think it is fairly important to note right here that Bacopa does not improve cognition per se, like some individuals claim. Some uh, folks claim that it helps with focus. And there are several studies that have proven that it does not help with executive function uh, or cognition in general, but only in the formation of short-term and long-term memories. And so if you're looking for something that's gonna be improving executive function and cognition, Bacopa may not be the right herb for you either. Now, when it comes down to dosing, there's two primary things that you want to keep in mind here, and that is uh, that the typical recommended dose is right around 300 milligrams. Now, some may recommend that a dosage as low as 150 milligrams might be effective, and even up to a gram may be effective, and it really just depends on your own personal biochemistry and how Bacopa affects you personally and how you respond to it. However, the primary thing to keep in mind here is that Bacopa's effects don't really kick in until about four weeks of use. And so it is highly recommended that if you are going to take it, to take it every single day up to four weeks and then begin to kind of play around with whether or not you want to cycle it on a daily cycle or a long-term cycle. It's really up to you and kind of how you begin to develop your own personal supplement stack. However, again, with this herb in particular as an adaptogen and as a stress reducer, I do typically recommend that you cycle it, but again, it would probably be prudent to take it every single day for four weeks and then begin to play with your cycling. But other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this made sense and was beneficial for you guys. If you have any questions in particular about this compound, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I love answering your questions as well as your comments help me out a ton in the YouTube algorithm. And so please do not be shy about leaving a comment down below. And other than that, I will see you next time.